creation. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nation. We've come to give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always. And all the people say, saved us by the power of his blood, made us to be a kingdom of priests serving his God and Father to Christ, be glory, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. The people of God said, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Palm Sunday. This is the first time in modern history to which the doors of many places of worship are closed due to the coronavirus. Statistically, now there are 311 thousand cases and 8,500 people dead. Wait, you may say, why bring us this news? I didn't come here for this news. I came here to hear a message of hope and uh, in the midst of death and despair. While many want hope and inspiration in the midst of this crisis, it is very important to acknowledge what is really going on in the reality of our everyday lives? Hope must not become our choice of drugs, our alcoholic beverage to drown the reality of everyday problems. Because once that bottle is empty, you're faced with the reality. So let's face the reality of problems and examine ways to get through them with clarity. Clarity through God's word. The truth of the matter is sp spiritually God, our relationship has been taken for granted. Bibles sit on tables, dusted and unopened. Places of worship remained open, but with lackluster attendance. Dusty benches are church because most are filled in their beds. Most People are filled in their beds. They're filling their beds instead of filling the pews. Prayers to God unheard, seized or vain. God has been abandoned because of the convenience of our everyday lives. Cell phone usage, internet distractions, apps, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn even. It appears some have a better relationship with mere people than they do with God. And even those relationships are shallow and void. So now that this virus has hit the earth and more particularly home, now you look to hear the word. Now you're ready for a word. Now you seek a message of hope and inspiration when it was always sitting on your nightstand your table or your shelf unopened. The fact that 8,500 people have died so far has finally gotten your attention. Over 300,000 are sick. Restaurants are closed. Bars are closed. Clubs are closed. Beaches are closed. Trails are closed. Gyms are closed. Malls are closed, etc., etc., etc. The truth is, God has been trying to wake you up, but you preferred your delusions and your illusions, your distractions of the world. How many more deaths will it take for you to finally get that you need God? Does it take you getting sick to appreciate life? Does it take you to lose a loved one or someone you're acquainted with for you to understand that you have completely abandoned your spiritual relationship and discipline with the Lord. You're off track. You know, we take for granted this thing called life. If you didn't know, they are projecting that at least 300,000 people could die from this virus. Now, this isn't it. This is not what I want. It is my prayer, of course, that none perish. There are many who will attempt to understand this epidemic with the simplicity of faith from not knowing God and not truly understanding the Bible, taking scriptures out of context to say that the righteous will be saved are those who abide under the shadow of the mighty scripture or saying, um, 
or saying things of, of no weapon shall formed against me shall prosper. Taking these scriptures out of context, using the simplicity of faith, but not truly having a faith, not truly understanding the faith, not truly understanding the scriptures, but the scripture that you ought to be quoting is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. He makes his son to rise on the evil and the good. He sendeth his reign on the just and unjust. Now it is imperative to get this scripture in your head and cling to it. If you didn't know, this virus has claimed the lives of all kinds of people, saved and unsaved, the good and the bad, righteous and the unrighteous, preachers and teachers, principles, congregants, men and women, healthy and not so healthy, black and white and all in between, Muslim and Jew, Christian and non-Christian, young and old, entrepreneurs, entertainers, and even civil rights leaders. I don't mean to scare you. No, that is not my intention today on this Palm Sunday. But this simplistic understanding of what God is doing is taking completely out of context and it makes no sense based upon those who are being affected by the corona and that is everyone everyone has anyone thought to take in consideration the time we are in notice on the christian calendar that the virus manifested in the united states during the season of lent for those of you who didn't know who don't know what Lent is, it is 40 days of consecration and devotion unto God and preparation and appreciation for the Resurrection Sunday. And today marks Palm Sunday and the commencement of Holy Week. It starts with Palm Sunday today, journeys through the leading of his crucifixion and death on Friday, and concludes with the Resurrection Sunday, which has been deemed as Easter. Taking all of the aforementioned in context, I ask God, what is it that you would have to give me to the people? What would you provide for a message of hope and life in the midst of death and, yes, despair? Where is the answer, my Lord? And he said, your brothers, my brothers, my sisters, you have tuned into the right to follow me to Matthew chapter three. This is where God has led me. Matthew chapter three, verse one. And it reads thus far in your Bible. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming repent. Listen, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said the voice Listen closely here. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way, prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Here lies the answer to our problem. This is appropriate for the time we are in both with the coronavirus and with the commencement of Holy Week, this Palm Sunday. The truth of the matter is that we are much like Adam and Eve, biting forbidden fruit and hiding what we did or what we did not do by masking it with a superficial faith, a faith that lacks works, a faith that produces no fruit, a faith that is merely filled with meaningless ritual rather than com cultivating a relationship with God. Finally, a faith without repentance. What does repentance mean? You, you ask me, what is this repentance? Repentance means to get off the way of loss, your way of being lost, of your destruction, of your illusion and your defeat. 
and your distractions and to get on the path of the way. What is this way, you ask me? It is Christ. Do you not know your word? He, I quote Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I can hear you say, yes, I believe this. I know this. But does your faith measure up to the repentance? Have you prepared his way during this holy week? During this coronavirus, have you heard the alarm that is going off? The alarm is the coronavirus. How much time do you think that you can borrow the air of God? People who are on ventilators and are perishing will tell you themselves they would have never imagined that this would have happened to them. Yes, all 8,500 of them who've perished and all 300,000 who are sick. How long will you wait is the question. Although your local places of worship have been closed, the doors of the church still remain open. No, I'm not talking about your pastor's church. I'm talking about the universal church composed of souls in bodies. These doors are doors as the church remain open. Are you prepared today to meet the Lord? What does your relationship with him really look like? Are you confident today that he really knows who you are? The scripture says that teachers, these teachers and the, these uh, preachers came and said to him, um, we cast out devils in your name. We preached in your name. And he tells them, depart from me. I never knew you. So it's not a matter of you knowing Jesus. Yes, that's part of the equation. But the other balance part of this equation, balance your equation, is does God, does he know you? Are you sure that you're bearing the fruit that is reflective of repentant life? The Lord told you to do something. How long will you wait? Your every breath has been counted before God and he knows your laughs. It is inevitable, get that, that everyone listening under the sound of my voice will ultimately perish, including me. Give him today a real palm. He's tired of the kind of palms that people pick from trees. The real palm he wants on this Palm Sunday is the palm of your hand. During the time that Yeshua sat on a donkey and he rode through Jerusalem, people laid before him their cloaks and palm branches to celebrate the king shouting, Hosanna, blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. He is here. Honor him. Prepare his way. Prepare by giving him the palm of your hand today and following his way. Hosanna means save now. Shout Hosanna so that the Lord can save you now because tomorrow may be too late. Now unto him he was able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his glorious presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be glory, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen. I'll see you next week. Yeah.